it's at first it's hard to it's hard to understand it because you just wouldn't think that we'd be doing something for so long that would be detrimental to our health yep and and uh and when you come to find out that the truth is there and you just just really willingly stay in ignorant to the fact and not researching it and not digging into it to find out what that's about and what's all happening. It's really shameful to that. I, I waited so long. I mean, I have a lot of anxiety for what I did for so long that, that I'm, I feel like I'm running behind now. I'm, I'm just, you know, we we're, we're, we want to go hard and fast, you know, and, and go the other direction. Season three of the Plant Strong podcast explores those Galileo moments where you seek to understand the real truth around your health and dare to see the world through a different lens. This season, we honor those courageous seekers who are paving the way for you and me. So grab your telescope, point it towards your future, and let's get Plant Strong together. Hello and welcome to the Plan Strong Podcast. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and with the pandemic this year, it will be pretty darn difficult, if not impossible, to make dinner reservations, let alone find a restaurant that serves you a plant strong, heart healthy meal. That is exactly why we've partnered with our new friends at the Chef's Garden to bring you an extra special four course adventure right to your doorstep. We have just a few boxes remaining and every ingredient has been handpicked from this regenerative farm and is loaded with both nutrition and flavor. And a random selection of boxes will get a super fun surprise, a heart-shaped cucumber. How adorable is that? Sign up today and we'll send you a box brimming with ingredients to make dinner for two along with printed menu and recipe cards and a library of videos so you can know exactly how to make every one of these incredible dishes. And as a special perk for our podcast listeners, today I'm going to reveal the dessert course. So spoiler alert, if you want to be surprised, skip ahead right now while I wait. Okay, here it is. Our fourth course is a sweet potato mazamorra. Let's repeat that together. Mazamorra just rolls off the tongue. Now, before my trip to the farm, I had never heard of a mazamorra and I had never eaten a sweet potato for dessert, but this was insane. It's a baked creamy custard that literally fools you into thinking it's cream based. I cannot wait to make it for my wife for Valentine's Day. Boxes will ship next week, so don't delay in ordering. Visit plantstrong.com slash garden today and reserve your spot. Today, I want to introduce you to Jennifer and Rodney Barrett of Barrett Family Farms. They may not be a household name to you yet, but I assure you their personal story will have a lasting impact. For almost 20 years, Jennifer and Rodney were poultry and cattle farmers in Arkansas. It's in their family's blood. However, after a series of major health setbacks, financial hardships, and moral crises, they finally decided to give it up. No longer could they reconcile their work with a greater purpose. And as Rodney says, you wouldn't think we'd be doing something for so long that was so detrimental to our own health. But like most of us, they just didn't know any better until they sought the truth. Today, those chicken houses that would breed over 100,000 chickens every 52 days, they're now giving birth to thousands of functional nourishing mushrooms and the cattle are literally part of the family. This is their courageous and compassionate journey to health in a radical ethical transformation. Rodney and Jennifer Barrett, I want to welcome you to season three of the Plant Strong podcast. 
thank you so much for for joining me and our listeners for this um, for this conversation. I've known you all for I'm going to guess now it's been about three years, if I'm not mistaken, two and a half, three years. It and, was two years and October 2018. Okay, and so and we're going to get to that, but I don't want to get to that yet. Um, but where I want to start is so season three of the podcast, what we're really doing is we're highlighting those courageous seekers of the truth that then have done something about it. And you guys, to me, absolutely epitomize that. Um, And so what I'd like to do is I want you to share your story, but let's start at the very, very beginning. Um, And if you could tell me about your life in Arkansas before you found Plant Strong Living. No, you can start it off. (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, we moved here in late 1999. We moved to the farm. Um, Took over my parents' chicken operation. Uh, Rodney and I both uh, have a love of farm life, country life. We both grew up around, you know, both of our grandparents had farms. And um, we just loved that farm life. And... um, we lived in Huntsville, Texas before then Rodney worked for the prison. I worked, had a you know job at the school. And um, when the opportunity came up for us to move here to the farm, we just jumped on it and took it and um, raised chickens in my parents' old chicken houses for six years, six and a half, six and a half seven. years yeah. um, until we couldn't compete anymore in the industry um, with those old houses. So we had to either, um, upgrade or build new facilities. So we chose to go all in and build new facilities in 2006 mm-hmm. and um, raise chickens. Uh, we had four 500 foot chicken houses that we raised around a hundred thousand chickens every 52 ish days. Yeah. I turn around was about two months. I mean, yeah. out time and everything you, you had about a two month turnaround. And uh, you raise the birds or the broilers uh, somewhere between 45 days and, mm-hmm. and as much as we went one time about 63 days. <clears throat> and that, was, that was rough. Yeah, right those there. were big chickens. <laughs> but, but that was a start on a whole new. Uh, and, and then what happens at the end of those 50 52 or 53 or 63 days. Are you then selling them to, um, to like somebody? The company decides exactly where they want that average bird weight to be based on the market that they're selling into. But and the bird get picked up and the, yeah. the company, uh, the company has got a, a catch crew that they'll come out with trucks and cages and everything. And then, and they'll hand load them things into cages and haul them to the processing plant where they'll be slaughtered. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they'll be packaged and sent out to wherever. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And we also had, um, we have cows too, because when you have chicken houses, you know, you just have cows, we had land. Um, and so we ran a cow calf operation as well um, that helped to supplement our income. And it kind of, seemingly worked symbiotically you know the chicken litter helped to fertilize the ground which helped to grow the hay and the grass which fed the cows and so there was this seemingly symbiosis and you know to it but um yeah and i think we've and i think we've all seen what is it uh, the biggest little farm something like that Mm -hmm. it makes it very you know look very idealistic obviously yes which which i don't know maybe that's what you guys were going for kind of you know, in a way, yes. Uh, you know, the 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 idea is to, you know, for for everything to work together and, and yeah. come, for, you know, all work for for each other. You know, animals included. Uh, yeah. It's a, a full loop circle of of ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we did. That's what we were full in chicken farmers, cow calf. Um, we did that for almost twenty years. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, yeah. <laughs> 20, almost 20 years. And, and then what, and then, and then what happened? Well, um, in 2011, Rodney got sick 
he um, he was having some very bad symptoms and we finally got him diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. And um, that just sent us, sent it sent us on a journey. Mm -hmm. it, it really did because the doctor that, um, that diagnosed him basically handed me a piece of paper, gave us no hope, said, here's your prescription for the medicine you need. Um, the prognosis wasn't good. They gave us no indication of how to adjust the diet. Um, it was just, here's your prescription, make a follow-up appointment. And so by the, before I even got out to the car with that, you know, with our walking orders, I was already trying to figure out like, there's gotta be another way, you know, there just has to be, yeah. this can't be it. Cause the, first of all, the prescription was really expensive yes, it was. and we didn't have insurance <laughs> and we were like, this is got. Yeah. There's gotta be something else. Yeah. And that, that didn't last very long. I probably didn't take that medication that they give me for maybe three months or, or maybe a little bit longer than three months because it made me feel awful. Yeah. Uh, it, it feel like you, it feel like you swallowed about a three or four inch rock and, and that's, it just sat in your gut all day long. And, yeah. and, and by the morning it'd be gone, but you had to do it over again. Mm -hmm. And I finally told her, I said, I'd rather just go ahead and die. Like they said, I would in two years, if I didn't take this medicine, I, I just, I just couldn't keep taking it. So will you let, let our uh, listeners know what exactly, what's your understanding of what is, ulcerative colitis well it's a it's an inflammation of the colon and it's an autoimmune problem that happens uh over time it just suppresses your immunity system to be able to fight off that inflammation that, that develops from toxicity in your foods and stuff in your in your colon and uh, uh mine got bad enough to where it was inflamed and and, and bleeding pretty severely and and this went on for probably four and a half years or five years. So I was trying to figure out how to solve that problem. We finally got hooked up with a, uh, with a chiropractor out of Texas County that, that worked with us a little bit. He did, he did some, uh, uh, some workshops on uh, chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancer, uh, just all different sorts of, of information that he did once a month. Uh, and, and we were going to this chiropractor usually once a week for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this information just kept perpetuating us searching for answers. Uh, it kept Jennifer hooked up pretty tight, you know, because it was going against every, a lot of the, the things that we grew up believing in. Yeah. And, and, and how we lived and, and how we function from day to day. And whenever them light bulbs started coming on and we figured out that a lot of this stuff is we're doing to ourselves by, by what we're eating. Yeah. And, and we gradually figured this out. She was a beach body coach <clears throat> for a little while. Well, in 2013, like we, I had been searching, we tried like essential oils. I tried to um, give him, bland food, the things I was reading, like no beans, no uh, peppers, things yeah. that would, in, you know, um, right. irritate his gut. So we were doing like bland stuff and it really didn't seem to make that much of a difference. But when we started cutting out processed stuff, like I started, we started doing more, more vegetables. We were still eating meat. Mm -hmm. and dairy mm -hmm. and eggs, lots of eggs, butter. Um, butter. We were still doing all of that, but we cut out a lot of the processed stuff right. and we were going to the chiropractor. And, um, in 2013, I had my own like revelation, uh, with my health because I saw a picture of myself and I was like overweight. Like it just shocked me that I was that overweight. And, um, I'd been suffering with depression um, with arthritis, um, high blood pressure, you know, chronic Western diseases. I was obesity. And, um, so 2013, I started my own little journey, it turned out to be a big journey to try to get fitter, healthier, lose weight and all that. It started out with, you know, it was vain <laughs> because, you know, I did not like the way I looked at all. 
So I started trying to get healthier. And whenever I started, you know, working out every day and we started cutting out processed food, going to the chiropractor, and it was like obvious that the choices we were making, you know, the food choices we were making were making a big difference in um, the way we felt and the way we were functioning as humans. And, um, and then in 2016, I'd been a beach body coach for a while. And um, my coach said, you what, know, to be- let me just stop you for a sec. Okay. When you say beach body, uh-huh. is, is this a uh, exercise uh, platform? Is this a nutrition platform? What is it? It is. Um, beach body has like a library of workouts. You know, Tony Horton's. Um, I started out with P ninety X three. I don't know oh, if yeah. you've heard. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I bought a DVD set of P ninety X three, and I started with that, and then just kind of got deeper into you know, coaching and the multi-level marketing part of it and all that. Yep. Tried, to, tried to do all that. Yep. And my coach and said, you know, if you want to be a good beach body coach, you need, everybody should do this three week reset, which is a 21 day program where the first week you have like some animal protein, but the, the last 14 days are completely plant-based. Yeah. So, that, so And so this was 2016. 2016. And so this was your first exposure then to slowly starting to reduce yes. meat? That yes. is correct. Okay. It, was, it was the first time that we had ever done that. And we also gave up coffee. for. Right. It was like an alkalizing yeah. uh, cleanse kind of reset situation. So those three weeks we dove into, we had a book that had all of the shopping recipes, lists and the right, recipes. Right. We, we learned all like what tempeh and tofu. We didn't know what any of these things were, but it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sent us on this journey to like, we were meal prepping our asses off. It was great. I, it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love you that you loved it. That's good. Yeah. But by the end of the three weeks, um, I felt so amazing. We both felt so great. I mean, because we did two weeks of just like micro green salads and I mean like all the veggies. We were eating so much veggies and big fruit yeah. plates in the morning. And yeah, it was awesome. Oh, it was amazing. And um, so the day after we finished that, we had a cup of coffee. Yes, so we, we were in the stratosphere. <laughs> Because we were, we had been eating this clean, amazing diet, and we hadn't been having coffee. And then we had one of our beautiful cups of coffee. Now you're zinging. Yes. Oh wow! <laughs> and yeah. I really, really started having to ask myself some really tough questions. Like because, what? Well, I felt amazing, and then I was going to work in a chicken house. Yeah. And I was doing that work, and I was still sending calves to slaughter, and mm-hmm. so all of those. The questions like, started coming up about yeah. what, not only what we were doing for trying to make a living here, but what we were doing to ourselves by participating and eating those types of foods, those animal protein foods that was causing us all to be sick. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it's, I mean, we proved it to ourselves in a three week, yeah. 21 day reset program that came from Beachbody. We proved that to ourselves and it took us a little bit they let those switches start coming on mm-hmm. to realize what was happening, but we were connected to it. You know, we were actually connected to all this yeah. and, and ready to receive all that stuff. No, you get, well, yeah, you're right. You guys were connected to it on a much more fundamental level than most people because you had a chicken farm. You said producing, what was it? A hundred thousand every 50 something days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they placed 102,000 chickens uh, approximately every 60 days. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. And then you had the cows as well. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So then what's your next move? Well, for a long time, um, not a long time, we thought, or I thought I could, you know, um, reconcile it. I thought um, we had this huge fiscal responsibility. Um, we weren't going to shirk that. Um, Rip, it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> it was it was awful whenever the switches came on and, and we started. Well, we were, I, we were basically hypocrites. Well, we had proven this thing to ourselves, right? Because, I mean, I had, I had listened 
um, to people about talking about a vegan diet. I had listened to people. I, I bought the books. Um, one of the first books I bought that was, uh, it was from my friend, Kathy Preston. She, she's my friend now. She was not then. Yeah. Cause I saw her on Oprah and I was like, Oh my God, she just had this light in her eyes and she looked so healthy and vibrant. And I bought the book. I flipped through it. And it, to me, it was just this fringe and it was just another diet. Right. And, um, I just couldn't accept it then. And, um, and that was in 2016 still. Um, no, I bought Kathy's book like back in 2009 or something long okay. time ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. But see, I just wasn't ready then. I was like, this wow. is crazy. I don't understand this. Um, that's fringy and all frou frou to right. eat vegetables. Just we we were too food. in, in embedded in animal agriculture at mm -hmm. that time. I mean, we were so neck deep and in the business and in, in the debt of it and the everyday aspect of what was going on. Uh, that so, so how do you reconcile all this? How do you reconcile it um, financially and how do you reconcile it um, mentally, emotionally, physically? What, yeah. what, what did you guys do? <laughs> I know it's been crazy. Well, the, the financial part was the hard part, right? Because that's what kept us doing our job. Like our, our farm, our lives, everything um, had been mortgaged and we, yeah. I mean, there was just not a way out of it. And unfortunately the poultry industry does not, uh, it's not rigged in the farmer's favor mm -hmm. for them to be successful. They, I mean, it's just not, it's, I mean, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but uh, the poultry industry, it's not rigged for the farmers to be successful. And um, so when I started understanding that, that even if we put in the, the time to pay the farm off and get through, you know, and, and get to the point where we don't have to do this job, I was just doing the math and like, I'm not good at math. <laughs> it just was not going to work. It just was not, there was no way to get out of it. And, um, so December, 2017, mm -hmm. I sent a letter out into the universe. I just, I was at the bottom. I could not continue to know what I know and do that job. I just, I couldn't, there was too much information. I had too much truth. I'd proved it to myself, you know, by, uh, eating a plant-based diet and, and feeling the way I felt, I just proved it to myself. And so really at the bottom, like at the bottom of that, I sat down and just pounded out a letter. I sent it out to Kathy Freston. I sent one to Rich Roll. I sent, I sent it to somebody else. And, um, and Kathy got back with me and bless her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And since then, it's just been kind of a roller coaster. We've, uh, it was September 2018 was our last batch of chickens. Um, June of 2018, we pulled our bulls off of the cows and stopped breeding. Um, and it's been one miracle after another that has sustained us this long. And we're still here and we are still in very much in transition to, uh, uh, transform the poultry barns into mushroom houses. Right. And we're just still, we're, we're about 80% there now. Um, and which is very, very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you started actually growing any kind of mushrooms yet? Not, Not yet. yet. Not, Not yet, yet, but that's in the near future. We're, we're looking at doing a small scale here pretty soon and start somewhere. Yeah. Because we still got a little bit to go on the, on the big facility. And uh, we're, we're antsy, real antsy trying to, we're, we're ready. It has been like, you cannot even believe what's happened in the last two years. It has just been a, uh, well, and, and, and um, uh, what kind of mushrooms are you going to grow? A, a variety or just, is there one in particular? We hope to start with king oysters, but we actually want to, with COVID, it has changed everything. We're hoping to let um, our, eventual end users dictate, yes. you know, what they want and what the right. market, you know, yeah. hopefully be able to have a big enough facility that we can do that. We'll be able to, um, 
fulfill what the market needs. And the great thing about mushrooms is instead of, you know, turning over every 53 days, like your chickens, these uh, guys will turn over what? Is it like a matter of days in some 20, cases? 24 to at the most about 35 days. Yeah. 24 to 27. Right in. Yeah. 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 And they don't poop. No, <laughs> no, they don't do they? No. They're, they are fun guys, aren't they? They are fun. They are. Yes. Uh, that is super exciting. And um, what did the, did the poultry industry have anything to say about you guys, you know, deciding to pull up roots, so to speak? You know, we tried to step out gracefully. I, you know, I, I don't wish any ill will mm-hmm. on, on the they did offer to help us sell our farm. Yeah, I don't, I don't offer, you know, I don't want any ill will on how we thought before that we're supposed to exist on the planet, you know, part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I can't take that away from myself. I, I can't. Yeah. Uh, we all come from a background of, of our past and how we've lived and in, in what we've done. Uh, I just hope now that, that we're on this new path that, uh, you know, we're just a better shining light for all of humanity and, and to help put a different spin on what's necessary in life to live. Uh, you know, animal protein's not necessary. And, no, and I'm coming to grips with that and finding that out from where I came from and how I grew up. It's at first it's hard to it's hard to understand it because you just wouldn't think that we'd be doing something for so long that would be detrimental to our health. Yep. And and uh and when you come to find out that the truth is there and you just just really willingly stay in ignorant to the fact and not researching it and not digging into it to find out what that's about and what's all happening. It's really shameful to that I, I waited so long. I mean, I have a lot of anxiety for what I did for so long that that I'm. I feel like I'm running behind now. I'm. I'm just. You know, we're we're we want to go hard and fast. You know, and and go the other direction. We met about two years ago. I think you said, uh, right. Jennifer. Uh, can you like? go through that, like where we met and how was that experience for you guys? Well, um, part of one of the miracles that happened, we were part of um, an ongoing documentary about the farm transformation. Yeah. And um, Sean Munson invited us to come to the um, engine two immersion. And honestly, I did not even know where Sedona was. I'd never heard of it. I didn't know what an immersion, I didn't know any, I did not know what was happening. Um, and, uh, but we had this chance to come and it was right after we sold our last batch of chickens. And so it's the first time we'd been. First time we really did anything, anything. to be to, in 20 years. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. So it was a big deal getting on the plane and all that. <laughs> And when I, when I was telling people that we were going to Sedona, people were like, oh, I've always wanted to go to Sedona. And I was like, I had no idea. I, I honestly, <laughs> I'm such a farm girl. We had no idea. Awesome experience. It was. So, a really awesome experience. So we came to the immersion and your dad stayed there for a week and got like, like I honestly think that every human being that has a human body <laughs> should, Every should be privileged to yes. um, have the understanding and uh, the education and information that was shared at that, at that immersion. It was so awesome. Um, and, you know, Rodney and I, we, we officially became vegan in July of 2018. And, but we had started playing around with like, you know, some of the garden and that kind of stuff. And, you know, Um, We were cooking with a lot of oil and uh, like eating coconut oil. And so when we got to the immersion and y'all were all no oil, we were like, I just don't know about this. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I just don't know. Like we were both 
this, is, this is a little too far. A little bit. Uh, like, uh, I don't understand what they're doing. But <laughs> we spent a week there and yeah. ate all the food and learned all the things. And um, like I, we had so much fun and mm -hmm. learned so much. And I still have this vision of your mom coming out of that dining hall with her plate just mounted <laughs> up and she had the biggest smile on her face in the whole wide world and just like <laughs> cracking me by. So yeah, um, but when we got home from the immersion, from eating that way for a week, no oil, whole yeah. food plant-based, we got home on a Saturday, I can't remember, but the next day, I did one of my workouts that I've been doing since 2013. Yeah. It, there was no comparison. There's like no comparison. I like. So you crushed I, it. I absolutely. Crushed I, I started it. crying when it was over because it was not even the same. It experience. is so insane. The difference. Yeah. It's so insane. Yes. Like I just want to show up and want to see what my and push myself to the edge. Not push myself, it's, but you it's know, it's not about the push. It's just what you can. Yeah, be, after being so right. sick for so long and dealing with overweight and all of that bullshit, the like, amount of <laughs> endurance just from the start after being on that mm -hmm. no oil uh, whole food plant whole food man. plant based meal prep, man. That it's just no. There's no comparison. No. None yeah. at all. So, what the sluggishness is there's none. Yeah. So tell me, <clears throat> um that was yeah, that so that wasn't quite two years ago. Uh what did your family and friends think of what you guys were doing? Did they think you guys had seriously like flown the coop? Yes. A lot Absolutely. Of ways. We've, A lot we've, of ways. A lot of our relationships have changed yep. since this has happened um, mm -hmm. because people like, just couldn't accept it. Um, changed how? Meaning like some relationships are no longer? Yes, actually, even, yeah. Even that, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It has been. It's, but, you know, like I said, Rodney and I, just, we just know too much truth. There's just too, there's no denying it. You know, and, we spent... Uh, Rip, whenever, before we were actually changing our ways and stuff, we, we were sitting down there at those poultry barns for sometimes an hour at a time trying to figure out something else to do with those buildings and still had to go in there and pick up, you know, dead corpses of chickens and, and yep. finish our job, you know. We went through this for a couple of years. Trying to figure out a different way. You know, trying to uh, how, how so how, what, how has your relationship changed or manifested uh, over the last several years? Me and Rodney? Yeah, you and Rodney. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's, well, we've had this really intense journey that we've had to travel together. And so I think that just, you know, by default brings it. Well, it can do one of two things. It can just, yeah. you know, corrupt make everything crumble or it can make you um, become closer. And we definitely have um, mm -hmm. whole food plant-based diets. Good for lots of things. Lots and lots of things. <laughs> and um, we're things. really, really happy. Yeah. <laughs> we're really happy. Rodney, what, what has happened with your uh, ulcerative colitis? I haven't had any symptoms at all since, uh, since I've gotten to a, uh, the complete whole food plant based, no animal protein whatsoever, and and gotten off of fried foods and you know not cooking in oil and grease and stuff anymore. We I haven't had any symptoms. Uh, now every once in a while the stress still gets up pretty tight, and and I will have some inflammation and stuff that develops, but it's in my I get it in my joints sometimes, my shoulders and knees and stuff, but it's just stress related. It's stress. <laughs> um, but as far as uh, problems coming from my diet, I don't have that as long as I stay off of that processed food. Right. I mean, I'm going to eat an Oreo right now in 20 minutes. I guarantee I can feel it in my knuckles. I can feel it in my, I mean, I can feel it in my joints very quickly. Uh, yep. If you mess up, you will know it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Jennifer, you're, uh, sounds like you're as lean and mean as you've ever been and f fit and uh, 
super, super, like super well. I'm, I'm doing really good. I am. I, I enjoy my workouts. I started off 2020 with um, a traumatic knee injury, actually. Um, some of my old arthritis creeped up and yeah. tried, to, tried to run too quick. And it just buckled out from underneath me and I had a lot of swelling and pain, but um, started out with a, with some physical therapy and a low impact workout that I've been doing actually all year. Um, it's a bar workout, B-A-R-R-E, you know, bar. Yep, yep. And oh my gosh, like it's been amazing. I, I, but definitely uh, night and day difference um, showing up to work out <laughs> on a whole yeah. food plant based diet, no oil. Tell me, what does, uh, can you tell me, like, what does a typical day of eating look like for the Barretts? We have gotten so lazy. <laughs> like, well, but what does lazy, what does lazy whole food plant-based look like? Beans, rice, oatmeal, potatoes, um, lots of leafy greens. We yeah. usually just get a bowl, fill it with leafy greens, whatever we have cooked up in the instant pot, like wet potatoes, rice, quinoa, um, things like that, that we put on our greens. I love to make uh, ranch dressing with the cashews and um, any kind of sauce, bal balsamic vinegar on top, limes, whatever squeezed on top. Um, Mooch. A lot of nutritional yeast. <laughs> that doesn't, so all that you just said there, that doesn't sound lazy to me. That sounds delicious. It is. Very delicious. <laughs> but, but as far as like doing a lot of fruit fruity cooking or meal prepping i like yeah. we just like we use we don't go through a bunch of fancy yeah i mean we keep it simple it's very simple and that's the great thing about this lifestyle to me is it's very customizable right if you want to do it simple and delicious like what you just said you can do that you know if on the weekends you want to get a little more frou frou and create a casserole or right. some sort of a, a wonderful soup or a stew you can do that as well or migas especiales or pancakes and then why not but yeah like oatmeal rice and beans sweet potatoes with you know whatever i mean yeah you're yeah. either it doesn't matter how you slice it you're in heaven well, absolutely <laughs> hey our cookbooks have changed they have they, they have they completely yeah. changed yeah you know we <laughs> use y'all's engine two cookbook all the time yeah yeah, okay. yeah. That has uh, bread. Yeah, that has bread. <laughs> One of my favorites. <laughs> so what what is um what does the next uh six months to a year look like for you guys? Do you guys have any kind of vision into that? Is there what what can we do? Everybody that's listening, what can we do to help send you guys good vibes? Well, we are working on a sanctuary plan uh for the cows. We still have two hundred and forty one cows. And we only have 160 grazable acres around that. So it's too many cows to too small a piece of land. Yeah. Um, we have somehow miraculously been able to maintain. Uh, they're all doing really well. Um, the ground is suffering. So we are, our plan is to implement rotational grazing um, to help. To intensify the grazing. Right. To help the, build the soil. Yeah, we've got to move faster. Uh, but we do need, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to acquire some more land. Yeah, we're gonna so that's, in, that's definitely um, very soon going to happen. And um, so that we can spread the herd out. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did just launch our social media pages, which um, kind of got put on hold. Well, did get put on hold after we lost Rodney's dad. Um, so that's exciting because we can't like, we're going to start to be able to share everything that's happening here right. um, in a, I love sharing on social media. I, I just absolutely uh, love to share the journey that we've been having. But yeah. um, the last couple of years have kept us. There's been a lot of operational changes and uh, organizational changes. And um, we are now in a place where I can just start to share. So if people want to follow along, Barrett Family Farm. What's the, <laughs> what, what, what's the handle? It's Barrett Family Farm on Instagram yeah. mm -hmm. Got and it. Facebook. Yeah. Got it. Um, Rodney, you mentioned that your, your father passed away. Did he pass away due to complications from COVID or what was it? Yeah, it was complications due to COVID. You know, he got a pneumonia and from that point, he just went downhill. Yeah, it just overwhelmed him and started shutting his organs and stuff down. He just, he just wasn't getting oxygen to his body the way he needed it. Uh, 
You know, I don't, I'm not really up to date on what the standard protocol is on this COVID, but you don't want it. And you don't want to go in the hospital because it's, yeah. the outcomes are not very good. You know, the doctors and stuff during that process, uh, my little brother was dealing with most of that because he was down there with, you know, in the area with him. He lived with him. Mm-hmm. And, and so he was the one going back and forth to the doctors and whatnot. But still, even he was not allowed in that hospital to be uh, next to him. Mm-hmm. During, during any of that he was the closest he could get to him uh, until his last breath was behind a glass mm-hmm. and it's just rip this is awful yep you know people are they're having to deal with this thing and losing loved ones everywhere including myself and they're having to i mean they can't even hug them goodbye you know before it's it's too late it's this it's it's over yeah and uh you know when they when they ventilated him he was already gone i mean he agreed to it and that was the last time that that was it it was over Mm -hmm. and it's just it's just not cool you know this is another thing where i firmly believe that a plant strong, plant based, whole food, plant based diet. I, I firmly believe that it it helps us to off to to not contract this virus. I really believe that to defend it, to defend it, or so it's more of a glancing blow. Right. Yeah. And and you know if and honestly, it wouldn't even exist if we were well, only. You're right. I mean, it's it's right for all. It seems like it was a zoonotic, you know. So it basically came came from came from animals, uh, the wet the 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 wet markets in in China. And you're right. I mean, <laughs> at some point, I wish that the media would acknowledge that uh, we can prevent the the vast majority of these pandemics if we would stop eating animals. That is correct. I yeah. believe that 100 percent, 125 percent. I know it's true. I mean, I've I've witnessed what it's done for me and Jennifer. Yeah, and, and and there's just too many benefits for it not to help that too. Yeah, I mean, it, even if you don't have the proof in front of your face, you know what I'm saying. Yep, totally. Yeah. Well, you guys, I I want to wish you all the best. Uh, I I love the fact that everything has come into alignment for you guys. So you know, with your your mission and your values and what you hold near and dear now. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't easy for you guys to make this 180, um, you know, pivot from basically raising chickens to raising mushrooms. But man, are we ever rooting for you guys? And uh, I have a feeling that because you got all your passion uh, behind this and uh, and you truly believe in it in your heart and soul, that good things are going to happen. So um, I'm so glad that. You know, we had the privilege and opportunity to meet in Sedona uh, yeah. a couple of year, a couple of years ago, and you know, whatever part we played in, you know, getting you guys on your journey. But uh, it is so good to see you guys, you know, Rodney and Jennifer. You guys look fantastic. Thank you. You look good yourself, you Rip. <laughs> <laughs> I can't well, wait to see all you guys again. We had such a good time yeah. up there. It was so fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to doing something like that again. I really do. Well, and, uh, you know, just from, you know, that immersion was the cherry on top. Yeah, it was. It was like the final, yeah. I don't know what you even call it. It was, it, That's right. we are born again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah. if we eat anything with oil in it, we're just like, oh my gosh. I mean, every once in a while it happens, but we're like, it's a condiment. Yeah. It's a yeah. condiment chocolate or you know a chip every once in a while but yep. um we stay i mean because we just know how it feels yep. to continue to um right. to follow that lifestyle that's right yeah it's too good it's too no. good too good <laughs> yeah. it's too good and it's true it's not too good to be <laughs> true it's too good and it's true and it's true Absolutely. yes indeed will yeah. you guys will you help do the uh, the, the send off with me so just repeat after me peace peace, peace. engine two engine, engine two, two. Keep it plant strong. Keep, Keep it plant, plant strong. strong. Here's to you, Barrett's. Thank you. Rip. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks so much. Thank you, Rodney and Jennifer. Against so many odds, you continue to seek the real truth about not just your health, but the health of the animals and the planet. You are a part of the solution, a light for others who are looking for the path. We're eternally grateful for your bravery and your belief in a better future for everyone. Thank you for listening to the Plant Strong Podcast. You can support the show by taking a quick minute to subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Sharing the show with your network is another great way to help us reach as many people as possible with the great news about plants. Thank you in advance for your support. It means everything to me. Have you had your own Galileo moment that you'd like to share? What happened when you stepped into the arena and shed the beliefs that you thought to be true? I'd love to hear about it. Visit plantstrongpodcast.com to submit your story and to learn more about today's guests and sponsors. The Plant Strong Podcast team includes Carrie Barrett, Lori Kordowich, Amy Mackey, Patrick Gavin, and Wade Clark. This season is dedicated to all of those courageous truth seekers who weren't afraid to look through the lens with clear vision and hold firm to a higher truth. Most notably, my parents, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. and Ann Cryle Esselstyn. Thanks for listening.